Welcome to Transport Vlog. My name is Paul and I'm standing on what will become the future southern entrance to Burwood North Station. It's a community open day and we're going to have a look at a couple of exciting things inside. But before we do, let's get our bearings. Burwood North is one of nine new stations on the City Metro West Line, which is due to open in 2032. The main station box is on the north side of Parramatta Road and there will be entrances on both sides of this road. And this new metro station will be about 900 metres north of the existing Burwood Railway Station. We start our tour in this area here. This will be the smaller of the two entrance buildings and under current plans, the actual entrance exit is likely to be on Burwood Road. So this is our guide for the Burwood North tour. Tell me your name and what you do and your role with the project. Uh, g'day everyone, my name's Sanyan. I'm the Community and Interface Director for the Central Tunnelling Package, working for Akiona Ferrovial Joint Venture. Akiona Ferrovial Joint Venture were awarded the Central Tunnelling Package and have already completed the boring of the twin tunnels between the Bays and Sydney Olympic Park and excavated five station boxes. So let's start our tour by going around the eastern side of this new station entrance box. And here it is. The entrance exit will be around here on Burwood Road and Parramatta Road is on the right. This station box is 13 metres deep and has an intermediate level here, which I'll talk about very soon, and then the entrance to a tunnel, but this is not for trains, it's for people. Time to go down below, and that is via these stairs. Okay, so there's a sort of intermediate level here. Lots of potential uses for this. If there was a need for an intermediate level for escalators, this could be where it could be, or it could be used for services. We will find out here at the time. And from this intermediate level, you get a wonderful view of the entrance to the new pedestrian tunnel that will go under Parramatta Road. I will be going through this tunnel shortly, so keep watching. Now, let's go a little deeper. So this is looking west, towards the intermediate level and where the future entrance exit is likely to be. But the more exciting view is in the other direction, with the enticing entrance to the pedestrian tunnel getting closer. These things peeking their head out of the eastern wall are called anchors. They run diagonally into the ground and support the station box walls. There are also anchors on the western wall, and here is a closer view of them. Notice the upward angle of these anchors as they stick out of the rock. In a few years time, this area will have escalators, lifts, opal gates, equipment rooms and all the other typical things you see on a metro station entrance and concourse. And passengers will go through this tunnel and then via further escalators and lifts to the platforms. And here is this tunnel, complete with blue and purple lighting, which blends in rather well with my backpack. So we are now in the future pedestrian underpass that will go under Parramatta Road. As you can see, it's structurally finished, isn't it? I mean, yeah. we might get some cladding or something, but yeah. That's right, this so, is almost, uh, as you said, almost the uh, final product in terms yeah. of a sealed pedestrian tunnel. There may be some uh, cladding and uh, you know, various other commuter related infrastructure. This was excavated during uh, 2023, uh, and the actual lining, uh, the concrete was poured over the last 12 months. So. Wow. Um, and how was it excavated? Was it road headers or? So the uh, pedestrian tunnel was excavated with a road header uh, from the other side. So once the main station box where the platforms will be was dropped to a level where we could access this, we deployed a road header that excavated the actual tunnel itself. So length 60 60 meters, meters in length. Yeah. Okay. It's uh, 7.5 meters wide, wide yeah. and 6.7 meters tall. Probably won't see this on the final pedestrian tunnel, but you can see these sort of purples, blue colors. Uh, which are coming from these lights on the side to give a kind of a bit of a futuristic Sydney Metro look. And projected onto the walls were some time-lapse clips of the main station box being excavated and that's where we are heading next. So we're now in the station box, this is where the future platforms are going to be, so um, should we start with some dimensions? Yeah, no problem. So the Burwood North station box is 197 metres long. 32 metres deep and about 27 metres wide. Although the station box is 27 metres wide, passengers will only see about two thirds of this width. A typical metro platform is 10 metres wide and the tracks and platform screen doors take up about three and a half metres on either side. So that leaves 10 metres for station services and other facilities that passengers will never see. And now for a fantastic view of the tunnel entrances at the eastern end of this station box. And looking closer, you can see the tunnels themselves and the temporary tunnel lighting. These oval shaped structures above the tunnel entrances are likely to be for station or tunnel ventilation systems. 
Once the ceiling is in place over the tracks, they will be hidden from view, and these air vents will remind you of what lies above. Now back to Sanyan, who will explain how this station box was created. It was excavated by excavators. We started in late 22, early 23. Focus was on this end, on the western end of the station box, to get that down as low as possible so we can get started on excavating the pedestrian tunnel under Parramatta Road, as well as to get started on the crossover cabin that's just west of the site itself. Um, can you remember how many excavators, so rotators, I guess? So that we, we used two rotors to excavate the crossover cabin. Yeah. One of those road headers also was used to excavate the pedestrian tunnel. Yeah. We had anywhere up to about seven or eight excavators um, used to excavate the actual station box itself. Uh, there was piling carried out for the first part up the top until we hit the, uh, the rock down the bottom. Piling is the process of drilling foundations through the ground. It prepares the ground to carry heavy loads and is used when the soil is too weak to provide structural strength by itself. The piles are then covered with shotcrete, which is a type of concrete that can be sprayed onto the walls. In this clip at the base station, you can see the exposed piles in this area here and the ones covered with shotcrete further back. And back at Burwood North, you can see the shotcrete on the darker upper part of this wall. And the lighter coloured area further down is the original rock and that's Sydney sandstone. So during excavation this site had a uh, acoustic shed above so the actual uh, I remember that actually, I remember oil, the shed, it was up this end. Directly so, above us at the moment, yeah. yeah. Right. So when did that go? I so that was removed in the last two months but wow, all this okay. oil was uh, yeah. taken up to the top and then loaded onto trucks right. and taken to various um, development sites. A lot of it in the early days went to West Sydney Airport. Yeah. Western Sydney Airport itself, but also the Western Sydney Airport, Sydney Metro Line. The crossover cavern entrance is at the western end of the station box, and the cavern itself is on the west side of Burwood Road. Trains to Parramatta and Westmead will enter the left section, with trains towards the city coming out from the section on the right. And this upper part will be used for ventilation and other systems, and will not be visible when the line opens, so this is a rare view. And on this day, I was able to experience something that I will probably never be able to do again, and that is to walk through this crossover cavern. So the line to Westmead will continue straight towards the tunnel. The turnout to the crossover will start around here, with the crossover itself being in this central area between the two supporting columns. It's a very similar design to the crossover cavern at Barangaroo Station, and will allow trains to terminate and reverse from either direction or switch to the opposite tunnel. To help you see the similarities, here is a clip of a train that is about to switch tunnels via the Barangaroo crossover cavern. The crossover cavern starts here. Notice the change to a curved wall. And now a similar curved wall at Burwood North. The wall on the right separates this line from the central section and the line in the other direction. And at the turnout, notice how the wall curves slightly to follow the crossover track. You can now see where the two tracks cross with the supporting columns on either side. And now those same supporting columns at Burwood North. So now going over where the two crossover tracks intersect. And this is followed by another wall that separates the two crossover tracks as they rejoin the main running lines. And the Burwood North crossover cavern has a very similar wall. Notice how on this side it curves slightly to the left to align with the tunnel at the end of this cavern. So the excavation of the crossover cavern, where did that fit into the whole project of, you know, what, what was done first? Were the tunnels done first, then this, or was this done before the tunnels? How did it all no, work out? So um, the excavation of the crossover cavern started once we finished excavating the station box that we just walked through. So we had to get down to the uh, bottom level to be able to deploy the two uh, road headers that excavated this. It's 180 metres uh, long. And to put that into context, the station box is 197 metres long, so the crossover cavern is almost as long as the station box. The actual tunnel boring machines were already excavating the two tunnels from, uh, from the base heading out towards this way, so the cavern was finished in time for the tunnel boring machines to arrive here, cross the station box, cross the cavern, and then continue tunnelling towards North Strathfield. The sides of the cavern already have temporary cable trays that carry electrical cables for lighting and for the temporary fans that are within the tunnels. There are also some pipes. What do you think they might be used for? Let me know in the comments. And I noticed several large gaps in the roof, which will probably be for tunnel ventilation systems. Now approaching the end of the crossover cavern and the start of the westbound tunnel to Parramatta and Westmead. And here is a view into this tunnel. The temporary lighting is very bright, allowing us to see the concrete ring segments in all their glory. So this is the eastbound tunnel, so trains will be coming from North Strathfield towards Burwood North Station. You can see how it bends slightly to the right towards North Strathfield, 
an amazing site and amazing to be able to be so close to this at this stage of the project. And here is a closer view of the eastbound tunnel as it curves to the right towards the direction of North Strathfield. Notice the temporary tunnel fans too. The tunnels are seven metres in diameter, uh, excavated by tunnel boring machines, uh, roughly middle of last year in 2024, uh, as the tunnel boring machines left, left this station. The tunnel boring machines themselves excavate the tunnel, but they also install the precast concrete segments that you can see behind us. Six segments make the perfect seven metre diameter ring. And if you're wondering why you can only see five segments per ring, well, that's because the sixth is under what will become the future track bed. And the actual segments themselves were manufactured at a facility we built at Eastern Creek, where we've cast 70,000 of these segments specifically for the central tunnelling package portion of the Sydney Metro West. Now returning to the station box, and whilst talking to Sanyan, I soon realised that the TBMs are the real boss, as they drive what has to be done and in what order. When we started the, the first station box over at the base, we excavated down to the required level to be able to launch the tunnel boring machines, and then the programming of the remainder of the uh, station boxes and cabins was to ensure they're ready for the time the tunnel boring machines arrive. So as Sanyan said, you excavate the station boxes before the TBMs come through, but there was one station on the Sydney Metro City and Southwest extension where that was not the case. Which one is it? Let me know in the comments. Now back in the station box, and Akiona for overall joint ventures work is pretty much done here now. The station fit out, which would include building the entrances, creating a concourse level and installing the escalators and lifts will be done by a different contractor. And this will include building the larger main station entrance exit, which will be on the north side of the Parramatta Road. Using different contractors is common practice, and it allows companies that specialise in tunnelling and civil engineering to complete the excavation before handing over to another contractor that is more suited to station fit out. A first for transport vlog, going for a ride in a construction lift. There are buttons, but I'm not going to press them because <laughs> I might get into trouble. <laughs> I guess construction lifts is more for equipment, uh, getting equipment down here. But it is a kind of step free access. It's got a capacity of um, 2,400 kilos or 30. It's funny it says passengers. Uh, 30 meters? 32 meters. 32 meters, there we go. <laughs> and back up top is this model of a TBM, so let's dissect it. The most obvious part is the cutter head at the front. This breaks the rock and soil using a combination of disc cutters and cutting knives. It also contains nozzles to inject water or other liquids into the rock or soil to help with the excavation process. The white cylindrical section is known as the shield. It provides protection to the operators inside and supports the newly created tunnel walls until the concrete lining segments are put into place. A conveyor system known as the segment feeder brings the concrete lining segments to the shield. Then this wheel with the two red bits, which is known as the erector, puts six of these concrete lining segments into place to form a tunnel ring. These hydraulic jacks then push against the new tunnel ring to propel the TBM forward. Behind the shield is the backup section. And this consists of conveyor systems to get the spoil out and pipes to get water and other substances to the cutter head nozzles. There are also hydraulic power units, a control centre and refuge chamber. And to really geek out on how TBMs work, you can watch this video now appearing in the top right. A big thanks to Sanyan for sharing his knowledge on camera and also to Matthew and Max for helping with the filming. So that concludes this very special video on Burwood North Station. Hope you enjoyed seeing the crossover cabin and the new pedestrian tunnel. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, give it a thumbs up, do subscribe if you haven't done so already, and smash that. It'd be wonderful if you could support me on Patreon. There's links in the description below. So I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you in the next one soon. Oh.